Every January, I get calls from people who say, I spend too much at Christmas. Will 2020, the year of the pandemic, be the year we finally spend less at Christmas? Or will we see it as an opportunity to make up for all of the money we didn't get to spend during the lockdown? Diane is back to answer those questions and give us a lot of practical advice starting right now. This is Debt Free in 30. Here's your host, Doug Hoyes. Diane, welcome back. It's Financial Literacy Month, mm-hmm. but it's also less than six weeks until Christmas. So I want to talk about holiday spending. So okay. you were on the show two weeks ago. Mm-hmm. We talked about emergency funds and I wanted to get into this whole Christmas discussion. So you're back. That's great. Thanks for I love coming it. back. And one of the obvious reasons that we talked about two weeks ago uh, to have an emergency fund or savings in general, I guess, is mm-hmm. so that you can be prepared for expected events. Now, you and I talked about unexpected, expected events. Well, mm-hmm. the holidays are an expected event. Exactly. And I'll show you how smart I am. All I right. can tell you, you mention any year, 3052, and I can tell you what day Christmas will be that year, December 25th. It's an expected event. And yet we get into trouble every year. Now, Let's talk about this year, because this is the interesting year, 2020. Mm -hmm. According to the 2020 Deloitte Holiday Retail Survey, shoppers expect to spend 7% less this year during the holiday season as compared to last year. And they plan to reduce spending in four key areas. And I'm sure everyone listening or watching can figure out intuitively off the top of their head where they are. Mm -hmm. Overall spending, okay, well, that's what a 7% drop is. Travel and experiences, probably not getting on a plane and going to Florida this, this Christmas, Time spent shopping, well, I'm not going to the mall as much. Or if you are, it's in and out. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's fast, man. I yeah. know exactly what I'm going to get. I go, I get it, and I'm gone. I'm not, you know, browsing. Exactly. Which comes to the last one, in-store shopping. So mm-hmm. questions for you. Okay. Before we talk about this year, which is what I want to focus on, mm-hmm. you are, as we talked about a couple of weeks ago, a frontline credit counselor. You're meeting with people all the time. Why do people always get into trouble during the holidays? Why do they spend more than they want to or they expect to? Uh, Yeah, so I see people every day for credit counseling, and that's a common thing that people actually ask, and they say, you know what, like, I... I need to have money for Christmas and I need to save for that. And it's interesting because, um, I mean, it's a lot of pressure, I think, that I that I see with clients feeling the pressure of buying, you know, the toys that are the new thing that they have to wait outside, you know, the stores for. And if their kids don't get it, they got to pay three times the amount or um, it's it's really just people wanting the bigger and better things, just keeping up, keeping up with the Jonas or the fear of missing out, which is in ah, your book. FOMO. Yes, it is. Oh, good. You got the plug in for the, the book, book like three minutes in. That's yes. fantastic. So it's in the book. It's a fear of missing out. It's a fear of, and it's a, it's a subconscious thing. I don't think people intentionally do that. It's, it's just, it's like, yeah, you know, I really want this for my kid. I really want to do this. It's been a rough year. It's just finding those reasons. Do you think pride factors into that too? A hundred percent. Hundred percent. People, people feel that they've maybe let their family down, or um, just saying no. I mean, I see many people who don't make much throughout the year, and they feel like, you know, they they want to give because they're appreciative of the people that are supporting them or who have helped them throughout the year, and they want to they want to display some type of affection. And usually, it's with something. But the funny thing is, is that at the end of the day, it's more about just being together at Christmas, not really necessarily spending that money. Yeah. And that's obviously spending time together actually costs money. If I have to get on a plane and go visit someone that costs money. If I have to, you know, travel, stay in a hotel, whatever. Um, And we're going to talk about how that, you know, likely will change this year. What about guilt? Do you think that factors in? I mean, that's uh, obviously pride is an element to it, but guilt, do you think that's a a factor as well? Yeah, I think guilt uh, coincides with the whole I I want to get you something that I can't afford during the year or I feel guilty because, you know, they y- your kid is doing really well and it's like they really deserve it. And it's been a rough year for them or something happened, you know, a tragedy happened and they feel like they just want to want to help out their kids and just want to make them feel better or a coworker, spouse or family, friends, whatever. Um, it's very, very common that people feel guilty and just want to, I guess, make the guilt go away. 
Yeah, and I mean, there's a bunch of other reasons I think that, again, people would probably come up with on their own if they thought about it. I mean, the, there's advertising everywhere, sales everywhere, so that mm-hmm. kind of gets you into it. And, um, uh, well, obviously this year I think there will be a an even bigger impetus to that. So let's talk about this year then. Okay. According to the Deloitte survey, more than half of holiday shoppers are nervous about shopping in store. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense to that you? That makes Perfect sense, yes. 73% are planning to have items delivered versus 62% last year. So that's a big increase. Mm -hmm. So based on the people you talk to, do you agree that overall we will spend less this year? Uh, Yes, actually I do. Um, I think that as of right now, the in-store shopping is more difficult. Uh, A lot of people don't want to, you know, the window shopping, like the whole experience of, I think many people do Christmas shopping, which I'm not a fan of, um, is... I do like, you know, a lot of people don't like Christmas music and stuff, but that just gets you in the mood. And it's just it 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 makes people feel happy to buy things and to feel like, OK, I'm giving this to somebody. Um, so I but the problem is now is this whole pandemic. Are they like I don't think people are going to be going to the stores and not going to be, you know, browsing and getting that whole experience of shopping and their routine, I guess, of the. Of the Christmas shopping. Would it help if I started singing Christmas songs yes. now? Would that would that be good? Please. So <laughs> the um, I could do Good King, except I can't pronounce Good King Wenceslas. Otherwise, I, I'd do that one for you. So in the past, it was I go to the mall. I like hearing the Christmas music. And I, I don't really know what I'm going for. Yeah, exactly. So I just, I'm walking, I'm browsing. It's a, it's a long process. Now you think it's much more of an in and out thing. I, I know exactly what I want. I'm going there and that's what I'm doing. Yeah. And I think with the pandemic and like even with the with in-store shopping, I mean, you go in for what you want, but then you see extra things. and You're like, oh, yeah, I can get this and I can do that. With this pandemic, though, I mean, we had this huge issue, like I said, back in March when I mentioned a couple of weeks ago in the podcast that you know, in social media and everything. And people were like, we're just terrified of paying rent. So now that we're still unknown, we still don't know what's going to happen at Christmas. Are we going to be quarantined? Um, our job's going to be lost. I mean, people have this fear now of, okay, now we just got to be smart about it. Everybody, there's a reason why they can spend less. Like as a society, hmm. we know we're saying, okay, it's, it's the fear of missing out is kind of gone because it's like, okay, well, you understand that I was on serve all year and I can't afford this. And there's more of an understanding level, I think, with that. So you're saying the pressure is off. I, I think that majority of people will have that pressure off because they will um, they'll they'll reiterate that, yeah, they were off work and they need that money for living expenses, for needs. And so I have an excuse this year. Because in the past, it was like, well, I don't really have the money and I don't want to go into debt to be spending, but I didn't want to admit that. Or people go into debt and they don't admit that either, right? Whereas this year, I can say, you know what? Pandemic, been off work. Uh, not, you it's know. understanding. It's it's like everybody understands like, oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. So many businesses lost. Uh, people just reduction of hours. Like people are more understanding because they see it. They physically see it, right? Yeah. And it's. It's not just an excuse. It's an actual reason. It's an actual reason for like sure. This is, this is reality here. Yes. So now every time you're on the show, I like to give an alternative point of view. Okay. So you have just sketched out why you think people will spend less this year. Mm-hmm. The main reason being we have less. And the second reason being in, it's a bit more difficult in some areas to be spending because like you say, you go to the mall, it's a big production. I mean, we've got our, our Hoy's Michaelis masks here we do. for when we when we leave this studio. Um, and so it's it, there's more to it when you're, when you're going out. Mm-hmm. But here's the alternate view. Okay. It's been, you know, seven, eight, nine months by the time we get to Christmas when I've been in restriction mode, lockdown mode, haven't been able to do much in the way of going to a restaurant, doing anything. So I've actually got some pent up demand. I may actually have some money. Now we've talked about this on the show many times. If you were on serve because you were a server at a restaurant or a chef and you were mm-hmm. bringing in three grand a month and tips and everything else, and now you are getting EI or CRB or serve and you're bringing in 1800 bucks a month, there's no doubt you are definitely worse off. There's less coming in. Mm-hmm. But if you're somebody who's been able to work from home, 
and you're an office worker, uh, you know, work at a computer, you're still getting your regular paycheck, but you don't have to pay for parking. You're not going into the city. You're not I'll going for out gas. for lunch, not yeah. paying for gas. You've actually got more money. So those people might be saying, hey, I've, I've been restricted for the last few months. Now I can finally spend some money. Mm -hmm. So that may cause some, uh, um, you know, COVID fatigue. I've got COVID fatigue. I want to finally be done with it. I read the newspapers and it looks like this is going to last for a while yet. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to go nuts with it. I think the other reason is online shopping is easier. Oh yeah. So going to the mall is hard. Going on my computer clicking a button and uh, the dude from Amazon is there at my door tomorrow makes it that much easier to spend as well. So if it is easier to shop online, if we do have this COVID fatigue, what is your advice for people? to, you know, be aware of that, be conscious of that. What what should they be thinking? What are you telling people you're you're meeting with who have covid fatigue and want to spend a lot? Well, we just we do discuss uh when we discuss budgeting, we talk about uh food budgets a lot and, you know, that's the easiest thing to adjust in a budget, but the reminder of don't go shopping. Don't go grocery shopping when you're hungry because you do it does make a difference. You go in there and you're just like, "Oh man, that looks really good. Yeah, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that." Same thing I think with with gifts. I think when you're when you're feeling down and like like being, you know, quarantined even by yourself and just looking and saying finding what will make me happy if I give something to somebody, I do want to buy this and maybe this and you know, uh those those sites are geniuses because they they listen they they listen to what you say they check your browsing history and they'll you know do their little algorithms and they'll say yeah you you want this i think you're going to want to buy this and it works so many people buy and they're like i don't know why i bought that and it's like well you know you're feeling down and you want to bring up those endorphins and just feeling better about gifting so you almost have to go into it realizing that when i click on that website they are going to be selling something to me. They have these really cool algorithms in the background oh, yeah. to push exactly the right buttons. And you're right. If if I go online and buy a pen mm -hmm. for the next six weeks, I will see a bunch of ads for pens. Yeah. And it doesn't matter what site I go about to. It. Well, yeah, you got the little uh, machine in your in your home there or your phone. And yeah. uh, I'm not going to say the, the, you know, the the thing's name. But, yeah, it's, yeah. it's listening <laughs> it's all the time. Listening. Right. And yeah. um, and I don't think that's just a conspiracy theory. You can all try this for yourself. You know, mention something that you would never think of buying otherwise, something you never have talked about. You know, water skis. Start talking about water skis. Which is yeah, not something, see how many. Yeah, not something somebody typically talks about in November or December and see if you start seeing ads for water skis or not. Yeah. You know, prove me wrong here on this. You have to be conscious that that's what's happening and they are deliberately manipulating you mm -hmm. and maybe being forewarned is forearmed. Exactly. Yeah. And I think um, just with like I, I've experienced job loss before and that was really tough. I was laid off and it was crummy because it was a permanent job and it was like, this is great. And it's like, nope, sorry, we don't have any more funding. And with that, it was actually about, it was around November, actually, I was laid off. And I was really sad because I was thinking, oh my gosh, how am I going to gift to my family? What are we going to do? Because we used to buy, I used to buy for my brother, my sister, my brother-in-law, my mom, my dad. And then that year we shifted because my family, I'm very fortunate. And I say this every time, I'm so fortunate. My family is very understanding. And they said, you know what, we don't care. And But then I understand that feeling of you just want to give. Um, and we started doing Secret Santa. So we do off um, drawnames.ca uh, and that's a free site. Everybody puts their email address and once everybody logs in, everybody gets a little generated name from your group and you can write your wish list in there. And so we, we decided to minimize it with let's just do one because we're adults. We don't need anything. It's about the experience. We're happy. Yes, you lost your job, but you know what? Or yes, this pandemic happened, but you're healthy, you're alive. Let's celebrate that. Let's celebrate the experiences together that we can have and will continue to have. So um, doing that um, draw names, it, we still do it today. We, we, we did it today and it's great because we do it early in the year. We actually, my sister said, yeah, let's do it earlier because of 
Amazon mm-hmm. and it's going to be busy. People might not yep. get their presents. So, and it's nice because you worry about one person. And I mean, I get stuff from my niece and nephew. The kids are different, but as an adult, and we think we're like, geez, what do I want? Socks? I don't know. You don't need anything. It's just about being together. And so, uh, this is a, a, an excellent point because now we're getting into the practical stuff here. Yeah. So, in your family, it's like, okay, rather than buying for everyone, we're going to draw names. And mm-hmm. in the old days, they was a piece of paper and a bucket. Mm-hmm. And that's how he did it. But now we've got drawnames.ca, apparently, that will we'll do it for you free. Yeah. They're probably stealing your data, though. Ah, so, ah, what do you care? Email. Yeah, free, put a fake email <laughs> in then. So now it's like, okay, I've got one person to buy for. And do you set limits on that? Do you you set, can, yeah, yeah, for sure. We did we did the first year. Um, actually, we do every year. We set limits because, I mean, at the end of the day, again, it's I think it's more comfortable that way because we don't assume what everybody can afford. Um, and to be honest, it's tough to even get to a limit, I think, as an adult, again, because it's like, I don't know, like, I don't, I don't need anything. It's like, it's more of like, do I want something or do I need it? And it's like trying to find something. And it's like, just, you know, just... It doesn't matter. It's yeah, just being together. It, it, I mean, it seems to me it would be a, an interesting challenge to say the limit is 10 bucks. Yeah. So you got to buy something. It's got to be silly and it's got to be less than 10 bucks. The, hmm. the good thing about this site, it's that it is connected to Amazon. So you can write down, it'll say, you know, what's your age group? How old are you? What gender are you? Um, and it'll give you a list of what common wish lists are. So, and it'll give you the prices on there. Um, but they're right on the first page. It says, these are the names and what is the budget? And you can write extra comments. You can ask the person, uh, anonymously and just say, Hey, um, you know, what else do you like? What color do you want of this? And they have no idea it's you because it's done through draw names. But how, who else is it? There's only one person drew my name this year. (laughs) The whole office. But at least you've, you've answered my question about what their monetization strategy is. They're linked in with Amazon. So they're getting a referral, a referral commission. So so, So that's good. So and I also, and again, we're, we're talking practical advice here. Yes. So practical advice, you know, don't shop while hungry. Well, don't, you know, go to Amazon when you're feeling down or at least mm-hmm. be aware of the fact that, okay, I'm having a bad day. Let's not do shopping therapy here. Yeah. I'm going to go for a walk, come back to it when I'm feeling a little better. Mm-hmm. Um, discuss it with your family now. So I really like that idea. Don't wait till December 23rd to be having this discussion, doing a secret Santa or just buying small gifts or just buying gifts for the kids, which is everything yeah. you've just said, um, or just one person. And I, I do like the idea of, well, you can't spend more than 10 bucks and it's got to be something silly, something mm-hmm. that is totally ridiculous and you're, you're trying to make, make the person laugh. You also kind of hinted at the whole idea of focusing on experiences as opposed to physical gifts. Mm-hmm. So you're talking about, well, hey, let's let's get together. I mean, I don't even know if we can do that anymore. I mean, maybe we're going to organize a big Zoom call for the whole family or something. Those mm-hmm. are going to be different things we'll be doing this year, I would assume. Oh, yeah, for sure. I think um, I think that people, again, it's just, it's the experience I think that people forget. And maybe this year they're going to be reminded of it again because of COVID and um, everything happening. And I mean, even, even some of our clients at Hoy's, uh, Michaelis, they they did contract COVID and it's really sad what happened. And they do have a different outlook in life and saying just it's, it's, it's all about being healthy in the next day. And it's, and I, like I said, people forget because Christmas is kind of like a, an excuse to buy. And it's just this monetary ridiculous thing that it's like in the end, um, your family and friends will understand if you can't afford and to do something like a tent, like I said, the, the, the Secret Santa, it's just, it's fantastic. And it makes you feel good because you buy something thoughtful and it doesn't have to be something crazy expensive. Yeah. And that was the whole point. Yeah. It was supposed to be something <laughs> something crazy. So, yeah. so focusing on the experience, the time, and, you mm-hmm. know, obviously uh, just before we started r- r- rolling here, we were talking about food for some reason. Um, well, hey, if you know how to bake something, bring that, oh, yeah, man, because that's, that's <laughs> way better than, uh, yeah. than anything else. What, what could go wrong there? Okay, now I want to get to the question and answer part of this show, okay. which I only do with you. I never do this with Ted or anybody else. But I'm special. We, yeah, you're special, exactly. So, well, I guess you know the answer. It's probably what I'm, <laughs> probably I'm doing with you. So we have a newsletter that goes out to um, clients, past clients, anybody who's talked to us. And there's, you know, tens of thousands of people who get it every month. Mm-hmm. And so we put the word out, hey, if you've got questions, send them in. So. Okay. A very common question we've gotten over the last month, how do you budget for Christmas season 
knowing you only make the same as any other month. Hmm, which makes sense. If you're on a salary, you're getting paid the same the same every month, month after month. Mm-hmm. People tend to go to credit cards so they won't feel the damage done to their finance overall. Do you have any tips on how we can enjoy our Christmas and still fulfill the urge to celebrate and buy things for our loved ones? Yeah, so talked about this a little bit with the with the Secret Santa stuff. I think again, when you're in a crunch, a lot of people, you know, the banks, the big companies tell you borrow, borrow. It's good for emergencies. And then, you know, your mindset is like, yeah, you know, this is this is something that is that's a good point. It's an emergency. This is this is something that I need to do. So you end up borrowing money and you think I'll worry about it later. And it's completely bad. So to borrow to borrow money to spend is not worth it in the end, um, just to avoid that 100 percent. Well, and if we did the math, so let's say you spend a thousand bucks this Christmas mm-hmm. on gifts and traveling and whatever, and you put it all on your credit card and your credit card has a 20% interest. Well, over the course of a year, 20% of a thousand bucks is 200 bucks. And yeah. I did that in my head. That's amazing. So yeah, exactly <laughs> right, man. Didn't use a calculator for that. So if it takes you you know, a full year or more to be paying off your credit card, then the thousand dollars was a lot more than a thousand dollars. Yes. And so being conscious of what you're actually spending is, is I think very important. And that's kind of the trick a lot of the time. You got to step back. So yeah. you made the comment about being aware of what's going on with your browser and, and all that. Mm-hmm. Well, be aware that when you're using the credit card, you are paying, you're going to be paying more than what the list price is Mm -hmm. unless you can pay it off. Yeah. It's just that ever since like debit cards and just the convenience of it is so, it's so great. I mean now, yeah, sure. We don't have to worry about cash and whatnot. Um, but just the tapping and just, they've increased that. I couldn't believe, I Mm -hmm. went to Costco and they're like, nah, it's 200 now. I was like, what? Yeah. That's crazy. Why? Because they want people to tap and well, it's pay because, more. It's because of COVID. That's yeah, why we're doing it. We're doing it to protect that. your health. We don't, they want people to be like, oh, I can spend more here yeah. now. And it's like, it's just, it's a mind game. So it's just being really careful not to spend, not to borrow to spend the money and, yeah. and just budget and figure out and maybe have the chat with your family or, um, yeah, I just, I, yeah, I just think it's it's just so important not to spend, not to borrow. Well, and you you mentioned the word budget, which of course I'm not a big fan of budgets because I don't think people do them. I think they're too complicated. I think there are better ways to do it. Go to YouTube, type in Doug Hoy's budget. You'll see all my videos on the on the topic. However, let's. I mean, we're we're only a few weeks from Christmas now, mm-hmm. so obviously, okay, you know, whatever you can do to be saving, great. But time's kind of running out. What if? What would your advice to someone be in January? So, okay, we got through Christmas this year, the holiday season, and it was very expensive or it was more expensive than we thought. Okay, let's start planning then for a year from now. And this is not just a a Christmas question. It can be applied to, you know, that person's birthday, which again is the same day every year, or Mm -hmm. back to school spending, which is roughly the same day every year. How do you suggest people plan in advance for events like that? Is it as simple as, well do the math and put some money into your bank account every month or are there other techniques they should be using? Uh, I think if you didn't listen to the podcast I was on last time, Mm -hmm. you should definitely listen to that one because we talked a lot about that. Um, I think again, it's, it's looking up, there's, there's different savings techniques that you can do. Um, uh, Someone just told me recently uh, that they put like envelopes, they numbered envelopes, put them in a, in like all in order. And then they randomly took, an envelope out and there was numbers. They're all numbered for the days of the calendar. So like one to 31 Mm -hmm. took it out and be like, okay, this is what I'm going to save today. So I think over a span of like two or three months, they saved like a thousand dollars because they were just taking money out. It's like, okay, today's $1. And it's just being mindful to be like, I may have to save, you know, uh, I don't know, hundred bucks this week or something and doing something like that or doing, um, the reverse, uh, you know, 52 week type savings. Uh, Tangerine has a bunch of, 
uh, not to promote them, <laughs> but um, but I just, if they want to, to sponsor research, the podcast, yes. they can send us send us uh, money. Yeah, um, just uh, just doing research and seeing. Okay, what what are some ways to start saving? Um, they have savings so that like every single week that you can put money away. When you spend coffee, they can put a percentage away. Um, they really, it's really easy ways to electronically do that. Um, but. I think um, even doing like I know you said you don't like budgeting, but you did talk about no budget budget. Uh, that's true. Um, so during that time, which I'll, I tell a lot of people to do that because it makes sense, which is basically you get your bills, you pay your bills when you get paid, you split them up. You know, if you get if you get paid biweekly, as I tell people all the time, you get paid biweekly, save half of your rent biweekly because it's a lot harder to come up with a thousand dollars than five hundred. And Start saving, start breaking up what you can and um, paying down your debts, saving what you essentially anything, anything is better than zero. Yeah. And, and what you just described is exactly my approach to not budgeting, which yeah. is OK. And, and I, I like the idea of every time I buy a coffee, well, 50 cents goes, gets put into my savings account. I don't know if anyone buys coffee anymore because we're all we're all locked down. Mm -hmm. But but the concept is the same. Right. Mm -hmm. And probably every bank has something similar to that. Um, you and I are are a fan of the banks that don't charge big service charges. So I think yeah. that's why you mentioned the one you did. And there's a, there's a one or two others that are in the same boat. But And I also am a definite believer in the pay as often as you get paid. So mm -hmm. you get paid biweekly, pay half your phone bill every payday, and then you don't really need to be budgeting because all your money has been has been spent. And back to the point about the holiday season, well, I can be setting that money aside on an automatic basis too. Yeah. So there's no reason you couldn't be at one of these no fee banks and have a savings account just for Christmas. Yeah. A savings account just for birthday, just for back to school. I mean, that may be a little crazy having a whole bunch of savings account, but that's really the envelope method in electronic format. Yeah. And I, um, I actually talked to somebody, uh, a friend, well, she became a friend, but uh, she was telling me that her and her husband have like 15 savings accounts. And I said, why? And she said, well, we do the envelope system on, mm -hmm. on the internet. And she goes, they're free anyway. So they don't care. So, and I said, that's actually very smart because, um, envelope system is very hard. It is, I a hundred percent agree. It is not my thing. Um, but you need to find something that works. If that doesn't work, move on to something else and see, okay, what can I do to start saving money to prepare for next year or... Yeah, and the, the envelope system is a great system in a world of cash because I take my paycheck and I allocate it into the individual envelopes. If that's the grocery envelope, that's all I can spend. But in a world without cash, okay, well, we have to use electronic envelopes. Mm -hmm. Well, that's really what all these different savings accounts exactly. are. And yeah, I mean, I'm an accountant. I love spreadsheets as much as the next guy. I think 15 accounts is probably crazy, but it's not up to me. Yeah, Doesn't exactly. matter what I think. Whatever is going to work for you is, is what you should do. Exactly. Another question from our newsletter readers. Okay. With Christmas just around the corner and having been financially impacted by COVID, what would be the best course of action to take in anticipation of gifts for family? So obviously we've we've already addressed some of this. Let me make the question more specific. What are the strategies to allow you to say no? Uh, How do you have that <laughs> conversation? Yeah, so I think... Um, yeah, it's just talking to family and saying, Hey, like this year, my family is European. We, who knows what's going to happen. We celebrate Christmas on Christmas Eve. There's like 40 of us probably not going to happen this year, which is very different, very difficult. Um, I don't, I've never opened gifts Christmas morning. That just wasn't part of my culture. But what we started to do is that everybody brings a dish, uh, instead of one person, the person that's hosting making all the food, which was like For that. 40 people. <laughs> which yeah. was like that and all these sides and all these things. It's like, no, 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 let's, let's all bring a dish there and we all coordinate. Okay. What do you want to bring? What do you like? And you can bring whatever you want. It's salads, you know, um, appetizers, main dishes, sides, like we. Kager. Everything. I wish. Yeah, that's not the way it works. Eh? No. And is there a website that will coordinate all this? You got the websites for everything else. I don't. Else. I should look that up. I think this is something that uh, <laughs> people can leave it in the you comments on, on YouTube. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, I'm there's gonna a bring website the, for that? Uh, there's got to be. I'm going yeah. to, well, I'm sure you could use Microsoft Teams or something if your whole family's on it. But, yeah. Um, and Microsoft, you're not a sponsor either. So uh, yeah, start exactly. sending us some money. But <laughs> but yeah, I think that, that makes perfect sense that, okay, I'm going to bring the first course. You're going to bring the dessert, whatever. 
Um, and it's less money spent because it's when you make something, I mean, it's going to cost you a lot less than something that you're purchasing or making for so many people or even a small family. If you're having a get together with your, you know, uh, we, I have a client who every Sunday her grocery bill is through the roof. And I said, why? It's just you two. And she goes, yeah, but that's her her comfort thing is making food for her family. They come over every week. And I said, well, what about, you know, uh, them bringing a dish and stuff? And, and she didn't think about that. Like, yep. which is, which is interesting because it's just, it's just shifting the way you think and just having those discussions too. And saying, how about, you know what, I'll make, I'll make the main dish or, uh, you guys bring extras on the side or, but, uh, but yeah, yeah I think it's, it's, it's going to be tough to have the conversation, but again, we have that good, we have that reason that COVID happened and it's happening. Yeah. And I think that's the key to everything we've talked about. You got to think about it in advance, which is a mistake people make. And then yeah. you've actually got to discuss it. Exactly. And this year you've got the the built-in excuse. Yeah. So, or reason, I guess, is a better way to say it. So take advantage of that. And and just so you know, my mother was born in Madrid, Spain, which is also in Europe, I believe. Yes, and um, we always open presents on Christmas Eve. Too. Oh, do you? Yeah. Wow, the, uh, look at that. So the, and I think the reason was, that way my mother and father wouldn't have to get up early in the morning the next morning. <laughs> so we we would open our stockings in the morning, which would just be, you know, smaller stuff. Mm-hmm. But um, then when I got married to a woman who's not a European and didn't believe that that was actually a thing. So we had to we had to switch. But yeah. uh, I'm glad that you're holding the the trend. Oh, I love the, it. The tradition I love it. there. It, yeah. So final practical advice. All right. So you're meeting with people every day. They want to cheer themselves up uh, and their family by spending Christmas. So let's kind of tie it all together. This is a special year, a unique year. Mm -hmm. What is your advice for people to not go overboard on the spending side this Christmas? Well, we still got some time. So make a plan. Uh, Talk about it with your family. Talk about it with people that, you know, some people do secret Santas and stuff at work. Maybe avoid that this year or or something like, I yeah, don't know. If you're like, not in the office. <laughs> just don't do then it. There's the perfect excuse <laughs> not, just to, don't do it. not to do it. Uh, not to borrow. Don't borrow any, don't use money that you are borrowing to, I guess, fulfill um, some emptiness that you feel in regards to giving. Because at the end of the day, you know, just remember health, health is the biggest thing. And Christmas is not about that. Um be be aware that you're not going to be bored and shopping online and you know searching and or feeling sad and cuz again during this time it's completely understandable don't shop when you're feeling down that's yeah, the biggest if, one and if shopping was an event then replace it with a different event it's yeah. just like you know go for a walk exactly yeah. i think that's a fantastic idea it's like yeah. okay from from now until christmas my goal is 10,000 steps a day and i'll go walk outside and or i'll walk in my basement or i'll go up and down the stairs in my apartment building or whatever i've got to do and that will be my event that replaces the other thing and there's probably some health benefits to that too i haven't, yeah, read, the, sure. haven't read the studies <laughs> but that's that's probably not a not a bad thing so so make a plan i like that thinking about it in advance don't be borrowing Mm -hmm. and then you know being mindful of the fact that okay maybe i'm compensating for the crappy situation of the the world and uh i mean how about that election result hey could you believe man the um that's an in joke between diane and i because we're (laughs) recording this before the before the election um don't be falling for the online deals and um using covid as the reason yes the excuse to travel less, do different things. And, you know, maybe this is the year we do come up with different trans, uh, traditions. So you're right. It will be hard to bring 40 people from, you know, three different provinces all together in, in your basement mm-hmm. this year. Okay, what can we do to replace that? Do we do we have some big, you know, Zoom meeting that's on all day from the beginning of the 24th to the end of the 25th and people drop in and say hello and it's like an open house and we actually get to see more people? Do we have 60 people on the call? Do we like, mm-hmm. what do we do? I think this is the perfect time to come up with brand new traditions. Yeah, and just I like I said, if we... If that happens and we can't get together, which again, it'll be an absolute first for my family, it's going to be odd. But at the same time, we're going to stay within our bubbles and be happy that we're all healthy and we'll see through that. But it's it, because it's not more about the presence. It's more of we're not going to be able to get together potentially. Um, I'm thinking probably not. But um, at the end of the day, you really reflect and say, wow, COVID is not about it's not about spending it's about that time together that we may or may not have so just focus focus on that this year 
um, of what it's supposed to be anyway. I think that's an, an excellent way to end it. Look at the big picture here exactly. and it's, it's not about how much you can spend. So uh, Diane, thank you very much thank for being you. here. That is our show for today. And if you found this discussion helpful, please share the link with your friends. Subscribe to the audio. This is the commercial I read here. Subscribe to the audio version of your on your favorite podcasting app. I'm sure you've got your favorite. Um, you know, a lot of people use the Apple one. And if you're watching on YouTube, please hit the subscribe button and notification bell so you're the first to know when a new episode of Debt Free and 30 is released every Saturday morning. And we also have explainer videos. Diane is featured in some of those, as mm -hmm. is Ted Michaelis and myself. They're little short videos, usually, you know, two minutes or less, where we talk about one specific concept. So we put those on the Debt Free and 30 channels as well. And I definitely appreciate it if you hit the like button and share your comments. So thanks for listening and watching. Until next week, I'm Doug Hoyes. That was Debt Free and 30.